Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. We're on our next video. Uh, again, I wanna thank Leopold for making this possible. It was really, for me, an eye-opener when Leopold said, Randy, can you make these a little more digestible? And when they said these, what they were talking about is these five calendar periods of the elk calendar and the four needs, how those needs change in each period and why that causes elk to change their location. So in this one, we're talking about the peak rut. And for me, that peak rut period, as you'll see in this later segments, runs somewhere about September 8th to 10th. And it, it just stays at that really high crescendo. And then it slowly starts towards the end of September, early October, starts weakening. And it's a long transition from peak rut to post rut. So here's some clips. I, I hope that this summary explains it in a really concise way. Our third seasonal period is the fun time, right? It's the peak rut. Things are crazy, the woods are noisy. In this peak rut, of these four needs I talked about in the last video, what's the number one priority need? It's breeding. In fact, I would say that need number one through 99 is breeding, followed by water and food and sanctuary really aren't even on his mind at this point. So for breeding, what do you need? You need cows. And where are you gonna find cows? Where the best food on the mountain or on the landscape exists. That's where you're gonna find the cows. And for me, this peak rut period I'm talking about, it, it makes this really quick transition from pre-rut and ramps up to peak rut. And then it stays there for quite a while. And even when it starts transitioning into the post rut, that's a much slower transition from peak rut to post rut than the rapid transition from pre rut to peak rut. So where do you find bull elk in the peak rut? Wherever you find cows. Find cows, find cows, find cows, find cows. And you're gonna find cows where there's food and water. I know that sounds really simple and it is. That's why it's so easy to find elk in the peak rut. So in this peak rut, the activity of these bulls is, as we all know, just ramps up so high that they, they cannot sustain that level of activity without abundant water. They can get by without food. They will get by without food, which is why they lose so much weight. But they're just so active, and it's usually hot in September. They need to water multiple times a day. And in a, if, if there is a general pattern to how an elk waters, it's, okay, in the evening when they get up out of their bed and they come down to their feeding area, there's usually not a huge distance of travel there. There is water somewhere nearby. He stops that afternoon or evening and gets a drink. And all the breeding and activity of the evening, he's not sleeping. He's just continually chasing cows. He's going to drink one or two times during that period. And then in the morning when the sun comes up and the cows start saying, you know what, I'm going to go bed, he usually stops and drinks on his way up to the bed. And this is a really good tactic to target a really old mature herd bull. Very often, the, the big bull will take his cows up someplace and bed them. And you'll hear him bugling and walking around up there, kind of telling all the other bulls, hey, stay away, these are my girls. And then it'll get kind of quiet for a while. And part of what's happening is besides him betting, very often that old bull knows that he can sneak away at maybe 11, noon, one o'clock, two o'clock, and he can come down to that water source and he will come in completely silent. He will water and he will head right back up and he will bed with those cows for the rest of the day. That's how much they need water in this peak rut period. If you're an archery hunter and you say, well, how do I target one of these big bulls in the peak rut period? I, I just can't get in on them with all the eyes that are, are watching me. Maybe you wanna go set up on his path from his bedding area to his water area because he's gonna come in there very often in this really peak rut period, he's gonna be making some midday appearances in a water hole. And if you're there, not back at camp, but you're there, you might hang your tag on that bull.
Well, <laughs> that, that is the summary of why the peak rut is so much fun, right? The elk are bugling, they're going crazy. Even as it tapers off, if you have a late cycling cow, all the bulls tune into that one or those two cows that came into a late cycle and they still are very, very active. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of why the peak rut is such a different period than the pre-rut and early season that came before it. And in these later videos, you'll see why the peak rut is so different than the post-rut and the late season that come after it. So appreciate you watching. Tune into the next video where we're gonna get into the hardest period of the year to tag your elk, the post-rut period.